Hey, what's happening, everybody? So I had received a, a comment. Hey, what motivated you to travel to Africa for the first time? So if this is your first time tuning into the channel, I'm a black American and I like to travel the world. And uh, this question was specifically about why, why do I like to go to Africa? So if you've seen some of my previous videos, the first couple, I did some in Uganda where I interviewed some local people, some Ugandans, and I did one in Kenya as well. I did one in Nairobi. And uh, it's a really good question. So I've been traveling for years. I didn't do an around the world trip for five, six years. I didn't do it like that. But I've always been traveling throughout my life. And one thing that I uh, realized was I first started traveling in Latin America. So I would hit up countries like Mexico, um, Puerto Rico, DR, Dominican Republic, um, everything down there. And I started making my way further and further south, got down to Brazil, got to Argentina, and I had really great experiences in those places. And then I started going the other way. I started heading towards Asia. So I went to Japan, I went to Thailand, I went to the Philippines and Cambodia, a whole bunch of countries in this part of the world. Now, after that, you know, travel is, it's kind of like a drug, you know, you get addicted to it. So I was like, all right, I've seen Latin America. I've seen a good, a decent little chunk of Asia. I got to see a, a lot of the Pacific uh, countries that I wanted to visit. I said, let me see what's good over in Europe. So I, I booked a plane ticket, uh, scheduled some time, and I started going to European countries. So I, I started in Spain. I went to, uh, to Sweden. I went to Finland, a whole bunch of places in Europe. So a little bit of Scandinavia, a little bit of Western Europe, and a little bit of Eastern Europe, like Romania and some of those countries. So at that point, I realized I had seen a, a lot of the world, you know, a lot of every region of the world, but there was one part that was missing. And this was obviously Africa, which is a really big part of the world that I feel like a lot of people just completely overlook or, you know, they just, they're not even thinking about it. It's not on their radar. They're uh, just going to the places that everyone else has gone to. You know, if there's not a Lonely Planet guide or some kind of travel book about it, they're not even uh, considering it as an option. They figure if tourists aren't there, there must be something wrong with the place. But uh, I, I thought a little bit differently. So I said, you know, Africa is kind of interesting, but I don't know anything about it. Uh, I just know names of different countries, but I, I don't know anyone living in Africa. I don't know any Americans, white or black, who visited Africa. So I was completely in the dark. So I said, I got to do some research. Now, in the U.S. the last couple of years, I'm sure uh, the whole world has kind of seen some of it, of kind of the racial uh, turmoil and strife that's been going on since about 2014 or something. You're seeing story after story of, uh, you know, this person called this person a racist name. This person says they hate this race or different celebrities getting in trouble for saying racist things. All the incidents with the police involving black uh, and brown people. So all these kind of things um, were in the back of my mind. At the same time, I became more curious about Africa. So uh, during my research for that, I, I just uh, looked at, um, you know, what's the feasibility of going out there? Because everyone knows it's a, it's a very, very long flight coming from the United States, especially if you're uh, living in the western side of the states like uh, California or um, Arizona, Nevada, to get all the way to Africa is you're you're going literally uh, halfway around the world to get there. So it's not easy. Like if you're living in New York or D.C., where you can just hop on a flight to Nigeria, hop on a flight to Senegal, and be there in a couple hours, where it's pretty much the same as going to Europe. So anyway. Um, uh, I found an opportunity, uh, found some time, found some good flights. I actually did run into another brother um, who travels the world as much as me or maybe even more than me. 
I was in Thailand and, you know, we chopped it up. We exchanged some info. And this brother, he's based out of D.C. And he was telling me, he said, dude, you got to go to the motherland. And I was like, yeah, Africa, but where? You know, Africa is so big. And he's like, man, I went to Ethiopia and I had a great time. He showed me some pictures. He said people were really cool. Uh, you know, he didn't have any uh, hate or anything like that. Because that's another thing we don't talk about that much, but a lot of African Americans, we have no idea what kind of reception we're going to get when we go to Africa. Because most of us, we don't have anyone in our family uh, directly living there that we could contact. And we may not have anyone in our circle who's ever been there. So you're, you're basically just blazing a new path from scratch. And, you know, I think on both sides, there's a lot of rumors. So you know, you hear things like, oh, Africans hate us. And I think Africans, some of them hear the same kind of thing, like, oh, African-Americans hate us and they think they're better than us. So I feel like there's a lot of uh, miscommunication on both sides and a lot of rumors and, you know, just a lot of disinformation. So I said, I got to go for myself. And I booked a flight to go to Ethiopia. So I, I told some of my friends, some of my black American friends, that I was heading out there and most people, I don't want to say they were negative, but they were basically negative. Like they would, <laughs> but it was, it was weird negative because it wasn't really based on much. It was just like, I've heard, I've kind of heard this or just a feeling they have. And they were like, oh, you know, African people, they don't like us. And I was like, really? All of them? Cause there's what, 50, 50, 52 countries in Africa, all 52 of them don't like us. So I was really trying to get down to the facts, not just like personal anecdotes. And so, uh, you know, certain people would be like, oh, when they come over to America, they really don't want anything to do with us. And I think that's that could be partly true, but I think that might be more of a class thing versus a, a race thing where they just don't like you because you're American and you're black. It, it's more of a, you know, maybe you're not at the same economic level that they are. They're very successful immigrants who may have been at the, the elite, at the tops of their country. So when they come to America, they only wanna associate with more elite people, even if the, the other people don't have the same skin color as them. Like they see the money above, you know, the, the brotherhood or the, the, the color skinship or kinship or whatever. They just looking at, you know, are you, can you afford to live in my neighborhood kind of thing versus we're all black. So I kind of get that. So anyway, yeah, a lot of people were telling me, oh, you're going to go over there. They're not going to like you. They're going to treat you bad, uh, whatever. So I said, I'm not going to let that stop me. I got to see for myself. So I get on a plane to Africa, <clears throat> Ethiopia to be specific. And, you know, I just got this feeling. It's a weird feeling to describe. At that point, I had already visited maybe 40 countries or so, and I never had this same kind of feeling, like a little bit of anxiety, but also kind of like, okay, this is where black people come from, kind of a feeling like, what is it going to be like? Um, because I've been to countries before that had a lot of black people, but they weren't really black ruled countries. So for example, Panama, obviously I've been to, it has tons of black people. Um, where else? Brazil. Brazil's got a grip of black people, blacks everywhere. Um, DR, Dominican Republic as well, blacks all over the place there. Cuba, same kind of thing. But at the same time, it's not a black country. It might be maybe 40% black or very heavily black, but you don't have that same feeling like, okay, blacks are running things here. Uh, most of those countries like Brazil, you look at the money or something like that, and you don't see a black face on the money. You don't see black coins and things. I think in DR you do. There's some some black people on the on the money, but like in Panama and some of these other countries I was at, it's not the same. You know because it's, it's a very mixed population, so it's not the same as actually going to Africa and everything is black and run by black people and the money has black people on it, the president is black, that kind of a thing. So uh, I got down to Ethiopia. Uh, I linked up with some friends uh, that my, my boy that I met uh, from DC, he kind of plugged me in with a local circle of guys there who were really cool, 
Uh, shout out to them because they made the experience so much easier and smoother. Um, they showed me around the city, Addis Ababa. I got to also visit um, Lali Bella, which is an amazing, amazing uh, site. It's a church made out of rock that was made centuries ago. And it, it's very impressive. It's a, it's a holy place and a pilgrimage for Ethiopian Christians. And I highly recommend that if you're ever in the country to take a trip there and see it. So overall, I'm not going to make this whole video about Ethiopia, but I want to say that it was just an amazing experience. I had good food there, met very friendly, very welcoming, welcoming people. A lot of people actually thought I, I was a local, like, you know, an Ethiopian American who was returning to uh, Ethiopia to visit relatives or something like that. A lot of them didn't immediately realize that I was uh, a black American who was you know, had really no roots to this uh, country and just was curious about it and wanted to see it. So because I had such a good experience there, I said, I want to go back to Africa again. And so uh, maybe eight months later, I made a trip out to Kenya and I've got those Kenyan videos on the channel, uh, which you can uh, take a look at. If you look at the channel, I think it's one of the first or second videos I did was in Kenya. Ethiopia on my first trip to Africa, I came back and then I did Uganda and I did Kenya in the same trip. So I spent a few weeks in Kenya, I spent a few weeks in Uganda before I left uh, Africa on that trip. So overall, man, uh, I just want to say I would encourage African Americans to visit Africa. If you're given the opportunity, don't miss out on it. Uh, no, I, I think no matter what country you visit in Africa, you're going to take something away from it, especially uh, being in being a black American, being somewhere where you see people that look like you, people um, that are in positions of power and, you know, making progress. Uh, most of the countries I visited were a lot more developed and advanced than I think the the western media portrays them and especially in the cities things are very modern you have wi-fi you have all the kind of conveniences that you're used to uh back home it's not primitive by any means the food is really good uh prices are lower than you're you're going to pay in the states for most things kenya was a little bit expensive but I think Kenya was probably the most advanced country. So it kind of it kind of balances out when you look at it like that. Matt, uh, if you have any more questions, you know, just hit me up and I'll try to do a video and, and speak to that topic. And that's it. So go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, follow the adventures. I'm going to be traveling this whole summer. So stay tuned. And I'm out this one.